What's up guys, it's Joe Troyer and thanks so much for checking out this video. I want to do something cool for you guys. Uh, I know that our, uh, our YouTube channel here uh, hasn't gotten a ton of attention and focus. Uh, so I wanted to do something cool just for you guys here that are subscribing to the YouTube channel. For those of you guys that aren't subscribed already and just stumbled across the video, good job, congratulations, you found it. Uh, go ahead and subscribe down below, hit the little bell so you can be notified when we release awesome content for you guys. So today I want to do something cool and uh, what I've done is taken an awesome piece of training out of our sales mastermind that we run here at Web1 and Digital Triggers. And it's called the Rebuttal Delivery Formula. And I know that you guys are going to absolutely love this, all right? So uh, this is going to teach you guys basically our three-step formula for handling objections. You're going to be ta taught how to isolate knows and really figure out what the true objection is because the rebuttal that you're getting or the objection that you're getting typically isn't the real real rebuttal all right and ultimately it really comes down to two or three real objections at the end of the day and i'm going to teach you guys how to use the rebuttals okay how to love the rebuttals and ultimately how to close a whole lot more business all right so i hope you guys enjoy this uh the sales mastermind as of recording this is open for enrollment for the next four month session. All right. So as of recording this, I'll put a link down in the, uh, in the, uh, description below. If you're interested, go ahead and go check that out. Uh, I just don't know how long we're going to have it open for you guys yet. So without further ado, let's get this thing kicked off. Welcome to the rebuttal delivery formula webinar consult session. Use them, love them, close them rebuttals. Okay really excited about this to show you guys okay so let's just do a quick overview of what you're going to get in this sesh right first thing is we're going to talk about why you should stop hating on getting no's and getting these objections second thing is we're going to get access to turning around by no a no by isolating the true objection one of the kind of crazy things is that the only like how you turn around a no is literally just getting what they're saying no to that is it then all the answers are already in the rebuttal. All the answers are just logical. Next is three, the simple three-step formula to delivering your rebuttals. All right, so jumping in, let's talk about quick preface here. So I just wanna rehash what rebuttals are in case you don't know. Rebuttals are given in response to an objection or a concern. And just to clarify that, an objection, one way to look at it is just a question from the prospect. It's not like a standoff situation or it's not a situation in which you should be concerned. Like, oh my God, ah, right? It's totally normal. Or how many, you ask questions all the time, especially when you wanna buy, right? You guys have heard that, you've heard that phrase, um, buying questions. I think any question is a buying question. We'll talk in, in just a second about what, what's a bad sign. So the other thing is prospects want this product to be the answer to what their business concerns are. They want this thing to be the thing that saves them. Don't you like, don't you see that when you speak with somebody, the questions they ask are just in line with saying, I want this to be it. I just need to ask you these questions so that I can know that it is for me. So your job is just to help them see that. Next is why you need to stop resisting the no. So there's some good news and some bad news regarding objections. The good news is that you want them. And why that's good is because they're going to happen and they're going to happen. Um, you want them happening early and you want them happening quickly in the console. Second is if you get them out of the way at ASAP, you're really establishing a clean environment, a clear air where there's no back concerns and thoughts that the prospect is having in their head over and over again. Second is, you know, answers other than yes do not mean no when you ask for the business. I think there was a statistic out there that says that you need to ask for the business about seven times. Most salespeople ask for the business seven times before they get a yes. So from that, right, you probably quit sometimes after two or three. You don't want to do that. Second is when you get a no at the end, it's only because they're interested. So Breaking that down, it may seem corny, but what really what it is, is you made it to the end of a consult with someone because they're freaking interested. Your people are busy. Your people are very busy and they only are on with you because they see an opportunity and this is worthwhile. So they're interested, trust me. 
So don't worry about these objections. You got it. All right. So the second thing is it's really better for the prospect to say these objections out loud and keep them in their own head, right? We talked about clearing the air before, but if they say the objections out loud, well, then at that point, you can deal with it. I can't deal with an objection that's in someone's head. I've got no idea unless I'm um, an expert psychic. And I don't mean that in a joking way. I have the ability to intuit what that person is dealing with. So that's something that you'll develop along the way in your in your sales journey if you haven't already developed those skills. So also, here's the bad news. There isn't any. Right? It's always exciting when you hear good news, bad news, and there isn't any bad news. The toughest thing is when you don't get a no. You want a binary answer. You want to drive your prospect to a yes or a no because you can work with a yes, right? You get a deal with a yes. You can work with a no because you can create an objection for that. But when you get a maybe, then there's nothing that you can do with a maybe. So the worst thing that can happen is a consult, is when a prospect is yesing you. And then at the end, they say no, and you don't know why. So for me, I would probably say that one out of every four consults, that when there's a yes man on the other line, that ends up closing. One out of every four. The other 75% of the time, it means that that person is not engaged. It means they're not sold. It means they're a nice person. A lot of people from the Midwest are big guessers, like Minnesota and Wisconsin, stuff like that. So what you really want to get is you got to get the person, If even if they're saying yes, you want them to say why they're saying yes, why they like it. You don't want, you want no's. Honestly, you get a couple no's, that means they're thinking critically. So creating and handling objections is not just for the end of a consult. So I say the word creating, it's very intentional. You want to create the objections. You want to give the person an opportunity to get their concerns out at the very beginning. You want it to actually be done at the beginning, kind of like an upside down pyramid, right? We tend to think of the uh, consults, rebuttals to happen at the very end, when in reality, you want them to happen at the very beginning. So turn that you know pyramid upside down, right? Because you, the tendency is for you to think that, oh man, as I keep on telling them more, they're going to have more questions, objections, whatever it is. No, they've got all their questions and their objections at the beginning. You know how many people are like ramming, advertising, marketing, sales, leads down their throat. They've already got a filter. They've already thinking about it. They already have the thoughts that they have about what they think that this is. So might as well let them get it out. Next is when they get these out, you can address them now. You could give your rebuttal now. And why is that key? Because one, now they're free to listen and focus on what you have to say and not their thoughts. And I've said that more than once because it's very important that they can do that. And two, is they will not run out of attention steam. So one other concept that I've, you know, I introduced before is um, decision juice. Decision juice is the ability of someone to make decisions carefully, thoughtfully, and after a certain amount of decisions in a day or a session or an hour or whatever, that juice will run out and it'll become very exhausting and they, you, know, you won't have clarity. The same thing is with attention. At the end of a consult, that prospect has given you a lot of attention, focus, and time, and they're not going to have the same level of ability to, uh, to work with you at the end. So that's why you want to handle them at the beginning. These are all good reasons for that. So isolating objections. So the key thing to underline this whole isolating objection thing is to understand that you cannot rebuttal that which does not exist in language. Yeah, the, the conversation between you and a prospect is not a telepathic one, mostly, right? It's a conversation that you have with them out there in the world of sound. So you must have them say what their objection is. So. We know there are only actually two real objections. And for 97% of the time, it's just one objection. And if you're thinking about what it is right now, you probably have the right answer. It's, I don't think it's gonna work. That's why people don't buy. People get in the phone because they want more biz. And they don't buy because they don't think it's going to get them more biz. 
and ultimately, you know, the the boiled down this distillation of everything is that I don't think this is going to work. I'm not convinced this is going to work. I'm not sure this is going to work. It's just all different incarnations of the same thing. The other objection, which is pretty much true 3% of the time, and it's really not even a thing because if somebody does not have the money to work with you, then they're probably uh, not going to be the best prospect for your business. And that, that is definitely real and true almost all of the time. And the people that don't have the money, they get the money. So it's not really an objection. Next, every other objection, like we talked, is another version of I don't think it's going to work. I'm talking about every objection. The first objection that's coming to your mind right now, another version of that. Because why that's the case is because when you get to the needs analysis, you're establishing that they want and need more business. Once that's the case, then it's only I don't think it's going to work. If you get to the end of the consult and you haven't established that that person needs more biz, then there are a million other reasons they shouldn't buy because they, they don't need it. They don't want it. They don't need more business. They're not interested in more business. So if you handle all the other pieces of the consult, right, or even just establishing that that person needs more work, this is the only objection. Okay, so the purpose of the I want to think about it rebuttal, right? When someone says, I want to think about it, or someone says, I don't know if it's, people aren't going to say, I don't know if it's going to work, right? They're going to say, I want to think about it. So the purpose of this rebuttal is we want to move away from their emotion running the show, from them leading with their um, reactions or thoughts or feelings. And we want to move into infusing logic and reason into the conversation. So I want to repeat that again. The goal of rebuttals, our rebuttals, is to move away from emotion and move into logic and reason being the thing that's the guiding hand. So we want to ground the no in a reason. We want this person who is saying no, your prospect, you want to get them to give you a reason why it's a no. Now, that reason may not be the real reason. In fact, it's not going to be unless they say, I don't think it's going to work. Right? The reason is something that you can work with. And when you uncover that, you can peel back the layers of the onion. So there's a couple of reasons people say no. And this is just a short list of them, but it comes from emotion. Right? So most people are just not quite sure why they say no. If you were to pulse, you know, a group of people who had, who got off a web a console with you and they did not end up buying, what you would likely find out is that they're not really 100% sure why they didn't say yes. They're just like, I just wanted to think about it. Just want to think about it. Just need to sleep on it. So the second thing is, you know, they can't imagine working together. They're kind of confused about whether or not this will make sense for them. Or they just don't have this image of you working together because it hasn't been painted. Next is they can't get over their past nightmare experience. And that comes from a place of fear. So that's what I mean when I say people come into your consult with a whole load of baggage already that they have about what this is. That's why you want to let the objections out right away. So they understand that that nightmare experience is already over. It happened. It was somebody else that ran their campaign. And you know what? The person who ran their campaign might have even done a freaking exceptional job and it still didn't work because things don't always work. That's a fact. They don't have to deal with that here. So let's get over it. So the last reason that people don't buy is because they don't like you. I think this is a very rare situation. Um, you know, even people that don't like me or haven't liked me, they still end up purchasing because they respect. They respect me because, and they will respect you because you're firm and you're clear and you put your foot down and you ask them the kind of questions that have them really think about their business. So it's, you know, one of the reasons that people say no, like I said, is they don't like you, but it's going to be really rare and you can overcome that just by being powerful. So the other reason is that, you know, the person you're working with isn't really the true decision maker. And then, you know, why didn't you handle this earlier? Why didn't you get from this person that they're not really the decision maker? Why didn't you like set up a situation that they can't? 
So this is something also you want to handle. That's a whole nother conversation. So you can um, almost, you can avoid almost all of this fogginess by making sure you're listening closely and behind the words of what they're saying to identify hidden objections. It's not explicit. So here's what I mean by that. You could hear in someone's tone what it is they think or feel or whatever it is about whatever's happening. You can hear concern, you can hear all that. You wanna listen closely to more than the words that they say, but how they say them. You wanna also ferociously sniff out the doubt that they have. And this is you know, along the lines of what I just mentioned about behind the words. And you wanna create the confidence. And don't step over any of the concerns that they have because those concerns will stop them from buying. Repeat that again. The concerns that they have are going to be in the way from them buying. The earlier that you get the consult objections to come up, the easier they are to handle. And this is the new piece here, is the more likely you are to get those concerns and questions resolved to satisfaction. Yeah, sometimes you'll only be able to get half of the concern addressed or move 90% away along the place of getting their uh, confidence up and those objections handled. During the rest of the consult, you can continue to work on that, but you start cracking that nut, you start cracking that shell open at the very beginning. So let's jump into your simple rebuttals formula. So the first step is admitting you have a objection. It's okay. You should know that objections are really good. We've talked about that a bunch and I'm just like kind of hitting it over and over and over again because you must change your perspective that there's something wrong or bad about an objection. You must let that go because if you look at your mindset right now and you kind of think about it, you probably are under the impression that if you get anything other than a yes or if people have objections, that it's scary. I'm gonna assert that you're thinking, wow, objections? I'd prefer not to have them. Well, I promise you that it's a fantasy that you're gonna run a business in any way or have any life in which you don't have to deal with people's questions and concerns. That's always going to come up and it's always going to happen. So you wanna be cool. As uh, Jules from uh, Pulp Fiction would say, be cool. This is when the sale actually starts. So that's when the gloves come off is when you actually complete the consult, you complete the, you know, the scripted part and you move into the rebuttals part or the objection handling, you know, they're with you. Now, this is just when it starts happening. This is really like, you know, gloves come off, the fight starts. It is exciting and it's fun and it's good. So you can do it, you can handle it, right? We just, we've got the simple formula. So tonality and rebuttals. Before we actually go into the actual uh, rebuttals themselves or the formula for the rebuttals, I want to just talk about tonality. So tonality is not the content of what you say, but it is the quality of how you say it. And I want to just touch base on that. I'm not going to introduce all the tonality personalities right now, but I want to just, I'll do a couple. But the point here is that you want to use tonality to counter slash balance their emotions. So if they're scared, you wanna be calm. You wanna console them. If they're really excited about working together, but they have this concern, you wanna get really excited when you deliver the rebuttal. Like, oh man, that's great. That's not really an issue at all. So sometimes that is matching their tonality and sometimes it's being the exact opposite. So you wanna definitely utilize that to your advantage because how you say something is equally as important, if not a lot of the time more important. Because I know I don't always say the same thing. Meaning like I don't always say the right thing. Sorry, correcting that. I don't always say the right thing when I'm doing uh, rebuttals, but I always use the right tonality because that's me connecting with another human being. So 
the other piece is there are a couple of tonality personalities that you know I think are most important during the rebuttal. So I want to mention those. So they're really a guide for you. They're going to help guide you to how to deliver them. So let's make a deal, Donnie and conciliatory Connie are some of my uh, you know favorite ones to use during a consult. So let's make a deal, Donnie is. Hey man, this is just so obvious. This is so clear. You know, let's make this happen. It's a great idea for you. Like it's confident. It's like matter of fact. Let's do this. And conciliatory Connie is really something that you a tone that you use. Like hey, you know, I I totally get that you want to think about it, and I completely understand that. In fact, you know, the majority of the contractors I I work with have felt the exact same thing you're feeling right now. What I found from speaking with them is boom that was the conciliatory connie so there's different tonalities that you can use for each of the rebuttals so i'm gonna give you the steps and i'm gonna say it more than one way so that you can really get a chance to you know get the full 360 degree view of what the steps are so the first step is going to be repeating back the concern or objection in your own words man this is so key you want to understand the objection so there's two reasons behind this well the first one is that you want to make sure you actually understand what their question or concern is that's the first thing the second thing is you want to make sure that they hear that you understand it that they feel heard so they know that you're actually working with them so i'll just give you just a quick um note that just came to my head. I remember I um, I was on a consult with a prospect and my manager uh, was listening into the conversation, you know, patched into the conversation. And I remember working with them and not like, I was like, I think this person wants to buy. I just don't get what's there. And he just whispered in my ear. He's like, he's concerned about that. Like, I forget what the reason was. He's like, he's concerned about this. And it just blew my mind that I actually didn't get what this person had a question about or what their objection was. Once I just said that, I was like, oh, are you concerned about this? He's like, oh yeah, I am. Boom, went right into the sale. Your ability to actually get this for yourself and let them know that you got it is the first and most important step, obviously, at this point. The second thing is you wanna cushion the response as you address the concern. So. Conciliatory Connie is often the tone that you use when you're doing a cushion. You want to use the feel, felt, found formula that you know many, many, you know, you probably have heard before. Um, and I hear that a lot of members are, you know, familiar with this. So I don't call it the feel, felt, found myself. It's just something that you know occurs as natural, but it's definitely behind and underpinning almost all rebuttals you'll ever read. Next is you want to create a confidence building statement and ask for the business. So if you look at you know a heart rate monitor, if you ever look at one of those um, like beep, beep machines that you see in a hospital, there's going to be a wave that goes up and down. So when you're delivering a rebuttal, when you are delivering the confidence building state, you're bringing that wave to the peak. And then when you ask for the business, that's at the peak of the confidence. So if you've ever seen the movie Wolf of Wall Street, you know confidence building statements. It's like, I absolutely know that you are going to be so rich, doctor. Let's get going on this. It's like, you know, that's a kind of a corny or maybe even a cheesy one that not everybody may buy right away. But that's exactly it. I mean, your building is like, listen. Everybody that works with us is so happy. These is, you know, these calls are guaranteed to meet the criteria or you don't pay. You know, these calls are going to 100% meet that criteria or you're just not going to pay for them. So you really have nothing to lose. Boom. Let's do this. That's the confidence building statement. All right. So let's say this another way. One. Hey, man, I hear you. This is what you're saying, right? All right we're just doing this colloquially now. All right, that's okay. That's normal. That's reasonable. You know, a lot of the contractors I speak with feel that way. 
But the facts are this, that that doesn't make no sense. Then we're moving into, all right, so now that we've handled that, let's get going on this deal. So there's an opening, right? The opening is, I got you. Second is, that's cool. All right, now, that's, now that we've handled that, let's get the deal going. The most important piece in every rebuttal is that you ask for the business. If you don't ask for the business and move it forward, then everything else was in vain, right? Your intention behind the call in the first place is to make sure you close it. So I wanna introduce something uh, right now that we have not um, to date. This is like a brand new rebuttal that we're putting in here. And why we're putting this in here for you is because a lot of the times when people say, I don't think it's gonna work or I don't know it, they're not really even clear why they don't think that. Maybe you know you didn't address their concern at the beginning about a past experience that they had. Um, you know, maybe they uh, they just weren't listening to you. And so now here you are. It's like you know logically that completely makes sense to work with you, right? This is you got a great product. You know, you're giving them pretty much quote unquote um, as close to as guaranteed as possible success, or they you know they're not going to pay anything. So if that's the case, it's like why aren't they just saying yes? Well, there's you want to take it from that experience of emotion that we've been talking about and underlying this whole thing, and you want to bring it into reality, grounding in this granular rebuttal. I made you know the granular because it goes into the granular details. Is designed to take whatever concerns that they have and bring them out into the open and walk them through logically how this is totally something that makes sense. So, without further ado, let's get into it. This is for the use of after I want to think about it, if there's no closure. Like I said, you want to get closure on their concerns. It's a step-by-step -step breakdown to isolate, not sure it's going to work. And to repeat, it's going to further infuse logic and uncovers the illogic that they have for themselves. Do you know that your prospect does not know they're being illogical? To them, their emotion is completely a logical phenomenon. There, it's it's like, oh yeah, this is just what I'm feeling. This is the truth, but they don't see that what's missing is the logic. So, here's this is a, a lead-in. Hey Ben, I know you still have some hesitation in getting the ball rolling with us. Most of the contractors I speak with end up getting a lot of clarity after we go over a couple points here. So are you clear that you only get charged for when you get actual phone calls from customers? Hmm. So with that point, what I'm essentially saying is, you know, that person, by the way, just to be clear, they're giving a retainer, but that retainer only gets money pulled out of it when they get actual phone calls from the customers, right? So there's no risk. Like unless they get calls, they're not gonna be paying money. Okay, so if it's no, then you say, well, then you won't pay anything if you don't get the kind of calls we're talking about. And that's not gonna happen. If yes, okay, they're clear. They're only gonna get money pulled from that retainer when there are calls coming in, like actual results there. So when we bring you calls from act people actively looking for HVAC services, people in the areas that you serve, we're talking calls that are not from salespeople, People are looking for parts or robo dollars, but actual quality calls where people need what you do. Calls that last at least 30 seconds. I mean, Ben, do you believe that those calls are the kind of calls that you could convert into jobs? Boom. So now the next step here is the first step is you're saying you're going to get calls. Second step is these calls are great quality, man. Can we agree on that? Like that if you got these calls, it would be easy for you to convert. They say, yes, perfect. Because from what you told me earlier in our conversation, I know for a fact you can convert those. They know they can. So based off your close percentage, Mr. Prospect, um, our agreeing on the fact that these are the types of calls that give you the best shot at closing business, I know it's really a no brainer for you to just give us the opportunity to get the phone ringing 
and they're in your business. Can you allow me the opportunity to get you those calls, right? Uh, in that third part, I'm saying, putting all the facts together, your close percentage, and the fact that we agree that these are the calls that give you the best shot at closing business, right? This quality call, it's really a no brainer for you to give us an opportunity, right? I'm building that confidence statement, creating the confidence building statement here. And now I'm asking for the business. It's clear, this thing's gonna work. I broke the whole thing down logically. So all we need to do is just ask for the business. There's no holes to poke in here. Uh, well, I don't think I'm gonna get calls. Okay, you won't pay. Okay, well, I don't know if, um, you know, I don't know if these calls are gonna be good. Well, you tell me. Does X, Y, and Z criteria qualify as a good call in your opinion? Well, yeah, I guess it does. Well, if you got calls like that, will you convert them? Well, I would, my business is based on that. So it's a, we're creating that airtight logic case. And now it's moving away from the emotions and moving into the logic and having that person agree. So there you have it. Now let's pull it all together. So first thing is you wanna bring out your objections to play early on in the conversation. Let them out. Who let the dogs out? The objection dogs, you did. So next, you wanna get where, they're, where they are at emotionally and show that with how you're listening and speaking with your tonality personality. So you wanna never ignore what you're hearing from the prospect and you wanna pay attention to the words that they're saying and where they're at emotionally. And you do this by letting them speak. And then when you speak, you're using your tonality personality so that you're matching them. So you actually let someone know that you get them when you do match your tonality personality with what they're saying. So if they're concerned and you're confident and then you're conciliatory, then they, you're directly speaking to their emotions, but you're doing it with words. And now all of a sudden that's making it into something real. And then you wanna always bring it back to the tangible and logical. And this is really important. Never have a conversation with a prospect that's um, imaginary or that's fantastical or that's a what if scenario. Like, what if I wanted uh, 50 jobs? Can you do that? Why would you, why is that question important? Do you want 10 jobs? You told me you wanted 10 jobs. Let's get you those. And if I brought you those 10 jobs, right? Or if I got you 10 phone calls and you got three jobs at your average job rate being, you know, 800 bucks, right? Wouldn't that be worth it to you? I imagine you'd have no problem giving us a shot, right? You're bringing it back to something real that they can say yes to. And then lastly, Always, always, always complete your rebuttals, whether we're talking about on a cold call or a consult, by asking for the business or moving the conversation forward to the next steps. So anything that you say with the, in response to the question or the objection is always moving things forward. You're doing the objection handling. You're answering the question so that you can move towards your desired outcome which is closing down the deal. You close down that deal, that's why you're in it. Okay, so thank you guys. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for getting committed to rebuttals and making sure that you are somebody that is looking at them in a positive light. Objections, they're good. I'm gonna handle them with logic. I'm gonna make sure I ease that person's emotion you know, if you think about it, you're kind of like a therapist part-time here. You're not listening to their problems, but you're dealing with them emotionally and you're bringing that emotion into logic. And when you do that, it really helps them, right? So thank you again. This completes our session on rebuttals. Now let's move into questions and answers. So uh, let's see, we didn't, uh, we had a couple comments, uh, Trevor, said, totally blown away by all this sales training by Eric. So grateful, best sales training I've ever seen. Thanks, man, appreciate that. Um, you know, we try to give you guys the most practical, usable, and again, I guess 
powerful sales training possible so that you know you're taking all the actions that you're doing you know, all the things you're doing and leveraging them to get the most result 